Hello, and welcome to On Point. I'm Nick Popham. Chances are, at some point in your day, you're going to see at least one person with a tattoo. A UC Davis study says one in five Americans has a tattoo. An NBC Wall Street Journal poll found that nearly half of Americans know at least one person with personal ink. But what's it like to get tatted? Well, some like to get creative and use more visible areas as their canvas. Others prefer concealed places like their lower or upper back. People put names and even special dates and symbols to show important life events. According to the Smithsonian, tattoos go as far back as 6,000 years. In ancient Egypt, it was mainly women with body art. Those with higher social status were likely to have specific designs. Ancient warriors would get ink to show their allegiance to a certain side, as well as show their ranks in the military. In the United States, body art was considered inappropriate and unprofessional, but many employers don't see tattoos as a problem anymore. Businesses like PetSmart and Starbucks have relaxed their policy, and even the Marine Corps is considering a change in its policy views under pressure from current Marines. One of the concerns about tattoos has been the danger of infection and the risk of blood-borne pathogens like hepatitis C and HIV. In California, the rules for tattoo parlors are rather strict. You have to be at least 18 years old to get body art, and each parlor is subject to surprise inspection. As a warning, there may be some language in the following discussion that could be considered offensive. But for now, let's send it over to Ashton Smith with more on All Things, Inc. Thank you, Nick. Joining us today, we have Juan Gomez, business owner and entrepreneur. We have Cooper, owner of Cat House Tattoo in Northridge. And we have Brian, who is a tattoo apprentice at Cat House in Northridge. Okay, so to start off, why do you think that tattoos are becoming less taboo and anyone can start? Mainstream media, athletes, uh, stars, uh, musicians. Rappers. Yeah, a lot of athletes, so too, the athletes were the norm. You know, those were normal guys, the jocks in school, and now they're heavily tattooed. So, yeah, I think it's all that mainstream media. It's done a lot of it. What about you, Juan? Do you have an opinion on it? Yeah, it, uh, over the last few years, they've exploded to, to a dizzying pace where uh, it's a blank canvas. You get to write down whatever, whoever, you express yourself, and it's become more acceptable. Um, steadily, it's climbing in the charts of acceptability, which means that there's a, a mass audience to, to have a, a, a drawing or a picture or anything written on their body, and, 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 and rightfully so, that's, that's something that people can express, and, and it's, it's good to have an expression of the person. Okay, so at some places such as Disneyland, offensive tattoos or objectionable tattoos can potentially get you kicked out. Like, yeah, you, right. Do you, is this I know. fair or no, it's what not. are your thoughts about this? <laughs> no, it's yeah. not. I don't, it's something objectionable to somebody else is not to someone else. It's not, it, you shouldn't tell somebody can't come in for something that they have on their skin. I mean, I see things I don't like all the time. You shouldn't delete or to tell or censor people. You know, I, I might find someone on you that I don't like, I can't tell you to get out of here. I mean, if you're going to a place with a dress code, I get that. I understand that completely, but tattoos, come on. I mean, these, these, these did start out as rebellious. You know, these were the what bikers had and what gang, I mean, these are what, it's the way it started. You got to accept that it did come from that, so. Uh, well, I agree with what, part of what he's saying. It's very subjective now, isn't it? I mean, if somebody comes up with, I hate Jews on the tattoo, yeah. I've got that on my neck, actually. So, no, I'm not joking. Yeah, it, no, it, it, I've got a hate you on my neck. Yeah. No, I hate Jews. Oh, I didn't say yeah. that. No, no, it was, no, no, it was very like direct that. and very specific at a certain people. Yeah, and then, you know, do you, as a, as a business owner, you have the right to, uh, to uh, reserve, uh, you reserve the right to refuse service to anyone based on no reason at all. And if that's one of your reasons, that's one of your reasons. If you don't want to have somebody with a Confederate flag tattooed on tattoo. their arm, and if you choose to, as a business owner, not to, not to have that in your business, you, you actually have the legal right not to do that. But then what about some of the brown power tattoo? I'm just putting it out there that they have whoever the owner is. For, yeah, it's, I know. Yeah, it's, it's subjective. I mean, we have one in our restaurant, and we reserve the right to re refuse service to anyone. And, when, and I've often you know, thrown people out of the restaurant, and they ask me why, and I say, for absolutely no reason. And you know, because then if you, say, if you give them a reason, it opens up a legal venue for them to attack you and say, well, you, you, because I'm black or because I'm brown or because I'm gray, whatever that, that little pet peeve of theirs is. And the fact of the matter is, I don't have to give you a reason. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and people don't understand that, that no is a complete sentence. 
They needed a justification. We're losing that, right? As business owners a little bit yeah. nowadays are saying that we're not allowed to throw certain people out for reasons, which is, that's scary. You do have the right to refuse service to anybody. And, and tattoo may be one. Mm -hmm. you know? Have customers ever complained about a server with tattoos at your restaurant? Yes, as a matter of fact. Um, this young lady was uh, an exotic dancer, and uh, you know, she ended up working at the restaurant, and so she had both jobs at the same time. So some of her customers would come to the restaurant um, because she was actually working two jobs to, you know, to stay above board. And uh, uh, yeah, people would say, I don't like it. I mean, it's a very, uh, Puerto Ranch is a very uh, tight-knit community and uh, very conservative. And, uh, and people were offended by that. Multiple people were offended by that. And uh, I, my thing was, if I interviewed her and I got a vibe that she would be a good fit, unless there was, an, like I said, an offensive tattoo that I personally, personally found offensive that I thought could be detrimental to the business, you know, a picture of her son on her arm was not an issue for me. But apparently it was for many people, and that was really too bad. But I didn't, I didn't get rid of her. I didn't write her up. I, didn't, I hired her, and I was, I was like, really upset when she left because she was a really good employee. So you would say that mostly it's the conservative people that complain about tattoos or like what kind of people usually complain? Yeah, that, 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 goes, that goes with almost every venue you can imagine is, is the, the small conservative group that's become the minority and they don't, really, generation too, and they don't, even, they don't even realize skills. they become the minority, they, they're becoming irrelevant. You know, their, their views on anything from abortion to tattoos to everything has become they are relevant, not the norm. Like you said, it's become very acceptable for people with tattoos, mm -hmm. and it's very uh, it's very endearing to me to have somebody with tattoos that I hang out with, you know. Because I, uh, as my kids know, I grew up in Inglewood, and um, that that movie Straight Outta Compton was a day in my life. I don't have the tattoos to show where I've been, but I've been there, and you wouldn't know it from talking to me today. But yeah, if I had the tattoos, I would tell the story that I've been there before. But instead, I have to tell you verbally, hey, I've been there. So. so. What is your opinion on the chains that are lifting their tattoo policies? Like mostly they're like restaurant chains. You know, it's always 50-50 with me. Everything I do is 50-50. I, I liked it. I started getting tattooed in 1985 when you wouldn't see them anywhere and only the tough guys had them and things like that. Um, I, it bums me out seeing so many. You know, it kind of takes away from the, um, you're, you're a separate little group. Then it adds to, I mean, I'm also in business to do tattoos. I like it. And I don't really look at people's tattoos that much anymore. I don't, it, the chain's lifting it. it I'm kind of weird. If I was to buy a house, I'd actually like a guy in a suit without tattoos. That sounds terrible. <laughs> it is, I'm a weird person, you know, but I'm not going to look at it. If I'm in the hospital, I'm, my nurse, like that I have been, and my nurse is covered in tattoos, I'm not going to, and I've heard people that have requested nurses without tattoos, which I think is ridiculous. So the guy does his job, which actually brings me to where, why should I care if the guy selling me a house has tattoos? I don't, it's a weird flip of a coin, but I think it's a good thing. Yeah, because I remember back in, in, the, in the old days, in the 80s and 90s, uh, I couldn't get a job up front anywhere. I've been covering tattoos for a long, long time. Uh, I'd, I'd have to do warehouse jobs. When I got a job in fast food, I was back washing dishes where the people didn't speak English or, you know, this. I was put back with people that couldn't work up front. And that's, it was kind of a bummer, but, you know, I understood it a little bit because I was covering tattoos. Lifting them. I, it's weird because I, do I don't notice tattoos anymore on people. No, not so if much. If you're a man. server and you're tattooed, I really don't notice it. I, but I guess I do again because I give you a card. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm always 50-50. Do I think it's a good thing? Yes, I, I do. It's, it's more acceptance, but it, it takes away from the, the rebel part of it that I used to enjoy, which is why I started getting them. You know. So, Brian, can you recall a time that you were seriously discriminated against because of your tattoos? Ooh, um, I made... I want to say the poor choice of getting a tattoo at a really young age. I got my first tattoo when I was 13. Um, my third tattoo ended up being on my hand. So, um, job stopper. Yeah, we call those job stoppers anywhere you get tattooed on your hands or your neck. Um, growing up, I had a single mom, so she was always about you know making sure you had a job. So, grew up working class, and um, as soon as I turned 16, I was out looking for jobs. And um, every time I had an interview, I had to sit down, cover my hand. Cause I had a hand tattoo. Um, I remember UPS actually went um, applied there. Uh, the guy, HR guy, just looked at my hand and I didn't get a call back um, from him. So I'm sure the tattoo didn't help. No, it was never. And, and same question for you, Cooper. Oh gosh, I don't. You know, I kind of make my own waves now. I don't. I, if I do get discriminated against, I don't notice it because I don't really care. I really, honestly, don't care what anybody thinks. I never have. But as far as jobs, when I was in the, in, you know, getting jobs, when I was, I mean, I've been self-employed for 
11 years now, 12 years. So I'm kind of out of that whole thing now. But I remember, same thing. I mean, I didn't get callbacks. I was covered you know, out of my neck. I knew I would try to wear turtlenecks. I would try to be embarrassing, like try to cover cheese and you know, try to do something like that. And I wouldn't get, and they would, sometimes they would even say, yeah, we, we can't, we can't. Because they would think you're a criminal or you know, something like that. But I mean, like I said, I have, if I do get this, I get watched in stores. But then again, also, and it's not just the tattoos. I do kind of look like a guy. <laughs> <I get laughs> no, I do kind of. I mean, I would watch me too. I, I would, you know, I, I, I would. I'd have to. I'd be I, stupid. If I, I get did. the same thing too. I wear gloss prevention. Um, so when I go to other stores like Sears or Macy's, and you see them, yeah, you, and it's funny like, come because on, hide at least. <laughs> yeah, because you know? uh, one of the guys I used to work with before went over to Macy's and. I'm shopping and he comes out and he's like, hey man, my guys just called you out because you look sketchy. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and it's like, I've been tattooing since I was 13, so I, with time you get used to it, I'm sure you're yeah, used to you, it. Yeah, I don't, I don't notice it. Yeah, I'm we don't sure notice it either. It's something you just don't pick up. Yeah. I mean, it's, if they are, who cares? And you've got that attitude so long that you just really don't even notice it. But I'm sure I've been set in place, set in restaurants in places where they were out. And I actually, thinking about it, I know I do. I know I get followed. I know that I get treated differently from police officers. I know that, really. That's really right away off the bat. I get treated like that, so. So do you think it's okay for businesses to not hire people because they have tattoos? And I'll start with you, Juan. Do I think it's... Okay for businesses to not hire someone because they have tattoos? I don't believe that, 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 that it's okay or not okay. That's not, that's not something that I would... Uh, I'm not qualified to answer because that that infers the the, um, the like I said the tattoo and that is uh, playing into whether you're a bigot whether for any reason um, you know I've been tattooed at brown for all my life and I can't tell the stories of a police officer putting their boot in my neck and there was a tattoo I couldn't remove you know it's just a skin color so no I don't think it's okay and I don't think it's not okay like I said if if, uh, if a business who's trying to create income and whose other a business that creates income is providing for a lot of people that create income, that create mortgages, and, and, and so if they they've, they've deemed it that it's going to hurt the bottom line overall, they should make that choice independently, whether it's a, a check mark, yes or no. I don't believe either way. There's no one right or wrong answer. It's just, it's just you know, by by uh, by a specific situation. What are your thoughts on this, Cooper? Oh yeah. I believe they should have the right to not hire you because you have tattoos. It could interfere with business. It could interfere with the way your person is perceived. My wife works for a, a, a big, a really big company. She hides all of her tattoos. Uh, that, that, yeah, it's your right to tattoo to not hire people for any reason you don't want to hire them. But based on based on race, no, of course not. But a tattoo is not a race. It's a choice. It's a choice you make as a kid, or, or whatever. So if you don't want to hire me, then you don't, and that is your complete right to do that. Just the same as why I came in and torn up jeans and. A, and a ratty shirt, you know. I mean, it's just, you know what I mean. It's your, it's your choice. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, even uh, being like probably discriminated against for tattoos, I can understand because um, I've seen some people try to get jobs, and they will have like their gang neighborhood on their forehead. You gotta get them in your level. Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna go apply at Macy's. Yeah. I, I know <laughs> that, but I will apply it at a, at a warehouse. Yeah. You know, it's it's or a record store, in your level. Yeah. So uh, I can I can see why. I don't blame them, I guess you can say so. So Juan, have you ever turned away a potential hire because of a tattoo that they had? Never. Never. As a matter of fact, uh, those are the people that I interview probably a little longer because I find them fascinating. Because, I mean, to, to come to a place knowing that you got two strikes against, you, against your, you know, your, because you know, you guys are well aware, you, you know, like you said, you've applied warehouses. So, oh, yeah. so for somebody to get the, the, the courage and the, and the self-esteem to do that, and, and then they run into somebody like myself who's accepting and completely okay with it. It's kind of a nice dynamic because there's a mutual respect. Like I said, I didn't get tattooed, but I lived a life for a long, long time. And, uh, and I can appreciate the walk and I can appreciate the, the artistry and, and like the rebellious factor like he was talking about. Yeah, you want to rebel a little bit. F you, you know, put it on your, put it on your arm. If you need, just hide it when you work. <laughs> so anyway. So is there a reason why you would not want to be served by someone who has tattoos? Uh, you know, they've got this thing where they want to, you know, when you give blood, they make you give all pay. Like, like, like we're, we're going to have hepatitis because we got tattooed by professional. You know, it, it, this is ridiculous. I think that's a form of freaking discrimination, yeah. right? Yeah. People come to us for people go, I want to give blood, but there's, and my wife, when 9-11 uh, happened, she's typo negative. She wanted to give blood. They're like, oh, you're covered in tattoos. Are you kidding me? You know, that's, I, I thought that was ridiculous, but, um. 
Okay, so Cooper, as you're pretty heavily tattooed, is there a reason that you would advise someone to not get tattoos at all? No, that's my business. Please, <laughs> please get tattooed. <laughs> at whatever you want, the drop of a hat, don't even think about it. Come in and get No, I mean, people that are going to get tattooed, they're ready for it. I mean, people that aren't, you, you'll see some people that you kind of think aren't, but I'm not your counselor. I'm not here to tell you what to do. If you hire me to do a job, it makes sense for me to do the job the way I'm supposed to do it. You know, if they, but if you're a first timer and you want to get tattooed in your face, I'm gonna try to talk you out of that one. I mean, that's that's one you might want to sit back and think about a tad bit. You know, first one in your hand or on your neck. I mean, but if you want to get a tattoo, of course I want a tattoo. I mean, same question. Yeah, same thing. Like Coop said, the only big thing is like, oh, I want to get it on my hand, and then you're looking at them, you're like. You're not. You don't even have a single tattoo. And you know on it's you. for a fat. Like they're doing. It yeah, and it's just because he wants to be cool, and they don't know what it's like to be tattooed. But if he says he wants to do it, <laughs> it's my job to do it. Yeah. You know, that's how I make my living. It's like your job is to do what you do. I mean, I'm not gonna tell people not to come in and eat. I hate New Year's. You know, you're, 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 solutions. You're, you're, you're a little chubby. Don't like, eat. You know, no, come in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're gonna throw that resolution away in two weeks. Just come in now. <laughs> you're hurting business, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. <laughs> So how long do you think that people, young people especially, should wait before they decide to put something permanent on, th on their body? You know, my, both my children, which are adults now, 28 and 21, at one time or another they would come to me and they say, uh, 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 you know, I'm thinking about getting a tattoo or they would, it would be brought up or discussed. And I said, well, as long as you know the parameters, like when my son was dressing in all black with a hoodie, as long as you know you got one or two strikes against you at any given point walking into any given situation, as long as you know that and you accept that and you think you can overcome that with your wit and tell intellect or communication skills, then you'll be okay. But if you don't have something else to bounce it off of, if when you open your mouth, they hear, you know, the rest of the package, which would be what they're thinking already, this, you know, brown kid that has an accent that can't communicate, that doesn't come from, well, you know, all those stigmas that are attached to that look. If you're not going to overcome that, you're going to have a hard time. And that was the only thing I said to them. And it's your choice even when they were actually underage. is their choice. As long as they understood, like they said, listen, I'm not talking you out of it, but the hand tattoo, probably want to wait on that one a little bit, right? It's going to hurt your and career. You, and I know and that even with your own kids, you have to be responsible enough to let them do what they want, but at the same time, explain to them specifically without sugarcoating it, the, the ramifications or repercussions of that. And Cooper, same question. I almost forgot the question. Oh, <laughs> um, how long do you think young people should wait before they're going to put something permanent on their body? California till you're 18. Honestly, there's, there's, there's laws for a reason. Uh, when I was younger, when I first got tattooed, uh, AIDS didn't really exist. Uh, hepatitis wasn't as, as, there's a lot of things out there that are bad. If you're going to some of the tattoos out of a garage or out of the house, they're not, they're, they don't understand the things that I understand. And when you're 18, that's when, we, that's when we're allowed to tattoo you. If you're going to a reputable shop, you're going to be safe. So I say, whenever just get tattooed when you're 18. Don't go when you're 15 to a garage where you're gonna, hepatitis is a big one. That'll, that'll, that'll really change your life. I mean, so and then the pros are they know how to, to handle that. So 18, I say, just for that basic reason, for your health. So do you think that they should think about it for like a year or something before no, they are just No, come tattooed right now. Okay. I'm right down the street. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get tattooed at the drop of a hat sometimes, and then I get tattooed with things I think of. You know, I get tattooed with something stupid that I just decided I wanted last minute, same with you. Yep. And I have tattoos that mean a lot to me. You know, I, it, you don't have to sit and think about something for a year. What do you, what do you think about for a year? You know, maybe getting married, but you know, <laughs> think about that one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, he's gonna kill me. <laughs> okay, so for those of you that have tattoos, what was your first tattoo? Uh, uh, I think this one, dragon. <sighs> <laughs> my first tattoo was. Uh, the nickname my friends gave me above my elbow that I got for twenty dollars out of somebody's room. Man, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you looked out. I looked you look out. out. I'm telling you, man. You're still hey, alive. Look, you're <laughs> the There's so many out there now, yeah. and you're not gonna get one from a real place. Yeah, luckily he was a tattoo apprentice, so. Good. Yeah. But he's like, I can't take you to the shop because you're underage. So come meet me at my house, and we'll do it there. So. <laughs> look around. Um, okay, so a tattoo on the head. It seems like a big decision, so what led you to make this decision? Cooper? I have made all my bad decisions already. Not one decision I can make is going to change anything of what I look like now. Come on, look at me. <laughs> but <laughs> Your like, judgment right there. I mean, <laughs> anything I do to my body now is completely just a coast. What led you to want to tattoo your face, though? Like I said, I, I mean, I started tattooing my face a long time ago. I, I, I don't really care. 
I really never did. I lucked out. Not just luck, actually. I never really cared what people thought of me. I never, I had gotten into a lot of trouble. I didn't come from a good neighborhood. I didn't do I'd, the same thing. I got a lot of trouble, but I grew out of it a little bit and I focused on work. And I worked a lot and a lot to become what I am now, which is a kind of good, you know? But, oh, wait, what was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> what led you to get out of I don't, yeah, I don't care now. <laughs> you know, I've done everything I've done. I've, I've, I own a business, I'm six, I'm, I'm married. I, everything I do is, is is I've worked hard for and I do well, so I don't really care about what I do to my body now. You know, it doesn't matter. I make my own rules anyway, so. But to get that, I just did it. Same as all my other ones. What the hell? Since you own a tattoo shop, like what kind of laws and regulations um, are there for running a tattoo parlor? Oh, uh, we just do whatever we want, hope we close down. No, uh, j just recently the health, the, the city got involved with health, which is good. They said it would get rid of crappy shops, which it hasn't, but, um, they, 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 they keep a check on us like restaurants. They come through, they check our water, they check our temperatures, they check our, uh, everything has to do with health. Same as they come to a hospital. We're actually cleaner than a lot of hospitals. I mean, they keep an eye on us and we keep an eye on ourselves. Tattoo, tattoo artists and owners have been policing themselves pretty well for a while without the city. I mean, it's a pretty respected art form to where we really care about how we're viewed and how our shop is viewed. So we did a great job at policing ourselves health-wise, but now the city's gotten involved. We have, you know, we all take our bloodborne pathogen to learn about, you know, cross contaminants and things like that. The shop is uh, approved by the city. Uh, the health board comes in once a year. We pay our fees. We get our license. It's put on the wall. And same as probably you have to do. Uh, I think they're a lot stricter with you guys. But. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I restaurant that. That's gotta be. It's crazy. But yeah. so that's then we follow all the city parameters and codes. We we uh, do the proper paperwork. You know, the IDs, things like that. You guys have been tattooed at our shop before, probably so a couple of you. <laughs> but. Okay, so can you ex explain exactly what the process is for getting a tattoo? For like, say if someone were to walk into your, your shop and they haven't had a tattoo before, what would you tell them? We start with a design. Uh, if you have a design that you want, we're all artists. We can draw things for you. If you have a design in your head, we'll draw it. You bring it in as a reference, we'll do that. We draw something for you. Uh, if it's something small, you say, yeah. We fill out the paperwork, we tattoo you. If it's something larger, we sit, we spend time drawing it. You come in, you approve it. We set an appointment for you, and then you come in and get tattooed. Is that the same thing that you do too? Yeah, pretty much. Um, just like you said, uh, some shops will kind of just, just, oh yeah, sure, let me slap something on you. So our shop likes to take the time to draw stuff out, um, if that's the case. But yeah, it's not, nothing too crazy. Yeah, you have a little bit longer wait than you used to have in the uh, 80s and 90s, because you know it's a lot busier. But we and, and now art, the art nowadays coming out of shops is more custom. To where back in the old days it was always flash. A lot of those guys weren't artists; they just picked it off the wall and they just do it. Now we don't. We don't do any flash. Most reputable shops don't do flash, which is the art that you pick off the wall. Okay. Um, so I know you said hepatitis, but what are the other risks that are associated with getting a tattoo? From us or from you? No, just like you know, like if you can get an infection or something. Infection or diseases. would be from you. It's, it's a cut. Uh, uh, hepatitis is the big one for us personally. Also, the tattoo artists. I mean, we all, we view blood as everybody's blood is dirty. That's the way you're supposed to view. We don't know you, and and we and we we handle all blood like it's dirty blood. Uh, hepatitis is the one that can get us AIDS. We're not going to get that. We all know about AIDS now. I mean, once it hits air, it's done. But hepatitis can stick for how many days? Uh, shelf life, like four days, room temperature. Ooh, longer than that, yeah. yeah. Um, there's I mean, been some tests where it, for seven days. Um, it just doesn't go away. Yeah, that's the so biggest we, one. The tattoo artists are actually at more risk than the customer is because we deal with so much of different blood, and, and we have to worry about that more. Uh, from you, on your end, if you go to a good artist, you don't have to worry about anything from that. You know, as far as you taking care of it, there's aftercare. It's an open wound. You have to treat it as an open wound. We give you instructions and just treat it as that. Keep it clean, no pets, no dirt, you know. No touching. So is there a type of tattoo that you guys just refuse to do and you won't put on someone? I'll put anything on anybody. <laughs> I, I'm not a judgment guy, I don't care. I'll put any, I'll put, I'll, 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 I hate Cooper. I'll tattoo it on someone, I don't care. I just don't care. It's not my job to judge you. It's not my job to tell you what you can and can't get. I'm an old-fashioned guy. If you want to get something, I'll do it. I mean, it's and I'll tat I also tattoo anywhere too. I don't have places where I won't tattoo. I'm the one in the shop that'll do them in weird places too. You know. Mm -hmm. So no, it's not my place to judge. Okay, so anyone can answer this. What are your thoughts on tattoos just being a trend now, and that people are just getting them to fit in? Well, I can tell you, I I, I have not fallen into a trend. Um, Give him a call. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I have this bracelet somebody gave me, and I flip it inward because uh, 
it says, I need pussy. Oh. But when I'm reaching for somebody's plate, I don't want him to read it. I like this guy so, more now. So I'm like, got ten times cooler. Yeah, I'm like, okay, yeah, I could see that, you know, being a problem only because I'm in their face with it. So that's it's not a tattoo, but as you can see, I, there's a lot of things that I do in my life that I, uh, that I, um, I'm not ashamed of it. I mean, I just told you about it it's on TV. But, but you, you have, have to right. pick, you have to pick your battles, and and that that trend, uh, to me is, uh, I'm I'm gonna get tattoos for sure, but I don't know what and when. And what about you, Cooper? The trend is great for us. I mean, like I said, this is what I this is what I decided to do for a business. I'm an artist. I've always been an artist. I've been drawing since I was three years old. I went to school for graphic design. That's what I did after that. I, but now I can make money at it. My business. I didn't get into business to fail. I got into business to succeed, to make a living, to have a future, to maybe retire on. So as long as this trend's going and it keeps it up, which I think it will. I mean, it's not just a trend. It's something that the mainstream just tapped into. Like, like when people just all of a sudden tapped, you know, just, they just got involved with it. So it's not like a certain type of pants. It's something they just, they just saw and said, wow, this is freaking cool. So I don't think it's going to go away as long as quality art's being put out. So as long as it's doing that, keep on coming. We want, we want to do that. I mean, I'm, I want to tattoo people as many as we can. But I don't see it as a trend. I see it as a new, untapped resource that we just, that normal, mainstream, kind of regular folk just found out about. And I'm like, God damn, I like that. And I think it's going to keep on going. So I'm happy. So unfortunately, that's all we have time for. But thank you so much for joining us today. Thank, thank you for having yeah, us. Thank you. We taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver, the strike zone, the net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. Thank you for watching On Point. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at CSUN On Point. Sunday mornings, look for us on LA's Channel 36 at 11.30 and tune in to KCSN on 88.5 FM at 5.30 in the morning to listen each week. For all of us here at On Point, I'm Nick Popham, and we'll see you next week.